The earliest memories I have with my dad, Terry, are on the football field. I started playing peewee football in the second grade, and he was one of my coaches. Football was always our common bond. I can remember uh, a Brazos Valley Championship game that we played. My dad was out of town on a business trip, and he got on an airplane and flew back home just to see that game and then flew back right after the game was over. We were in pre-game warm-up and uh, he walked out on the field uh, in his business suit because he came straight from the airport. I was just thinking, man, this game must be pretty important. You know, I'm in the second grade. From the first year that he played, he kept telling me that he wanted to play college football and even go to the NFL. And I said, well, Dusty, there's a lot of little eight-year-old boys out there right now that have the same ambition. If that's what you want to do, just put the work in and it'll happen. Has the time, passes picked off by Texas. Number 46, Dusty Renfro with the interception. Nothing doing. Play was disrupted quickly. Dusty Renfro, 46, was waiting. I don't think I would have finished my career fifth on the all-time tackle list at Texas or spent three years playing professional football without my dad's words of encouragement. Athletics has been a big part of all of our lives. We just know that you just gotta have the same attitude about life as you do about athletics. And you just can't ever quit. You've just gotta push through. When the going gets the toughest, that's when you've gotta try the hardest. The going certainly got the toughest for my dad in August of 2015 when he saw his doctor for a routine checkup. And the doctor came back in, he said, Mr. Renfro, uh, your kidneys are in decline. So they would bring me and test me every month after that. And sure enough, every month there was a significant decline. So they said, well, we better get a CAT scan of your kidneys to see what's going on. So uh, they did and they discovered a tumor and uh, it was malignant. The doctors removed my dad's left kidney. After the surgery, the function on his remaining kidney was down to about 15%. He had to go on dialysis to survive. If you Google life expectancy of dialysis patients, it's typically three to five years. Typically heart attacks or something will take you out. Quite a bit of pain involved with dialysis. It's just not any kind of a lifestyle that long term. It's just a real short-term deal. I knew that we had to get him off dialysis just as soon as possible. And it, was, it would save his life. Right then, without hesitation, I said, you know, we're gonna get you in shape where you can have a kidney transplant. To even be considered for a transplant, my dad had to drop more than 100 pounds. So I trained him. There was a time where he would say, oh, it hurts, you know, we would be lifting and he, would, he was sore and uh, it hurt. And I said, you know what hurts? Having your kidney taken out, that's what hurts. I said, do another set. Within a year, my dad lost enough weight to become eligible for a transplant. He wanted it, so he worked for it. But unlike the advice he gave me when I was eight, this time we had an obstacle that was outside of his control. He needed a donor. They put me on the transplant list, and when I told Dusty about this, he was out in West Texas. We had a pretty uh, good conversation about it. He said, Dad, I'm going to give you a kidney. I didn't know if I was a match or anything. I just I just had a feeling I would be, and I said, that's, that's what we're going to do. That's our only option, so that's what's going to happen. The more and more I thought about that, the, the less of a good idea I thought it was, and, you know, He's perfectly healthy, and I thought, you know, why should he have to go under the knife? I'll just wait until I can get a cadaver donor or something. But he kept insisting, and uh, I said, no, Dusty, I'm not gonna take your kidney. I was a little bit offended by it. It was an easy decision for me, and I couldn't understand why it wasn't an easy decision for them. I had to fight to get them to see, see it from my perspective. He said, uh, if I needed a kidney, would you give me one? So that kind of took all the air out of my argument, you know, and I said, well, yeah, you know I would. It's the ultimate gift. Here we are, we're, we're getting ready to go into surgery tomorrow morning. 
starts at 7.30. I think the biggest thing that, that worried me was um, how he would take care of himself after the transplant. It's not something that you can take back. Uh, so when you give this kidney, it's it's his. Also, he told me there would never be any more Father's Day gifts or birthday gifts, that this was his gift and he's done. And I agreed to that. My dad and I both went under the knife on Tuesday, December 6th. Both surgeries were successful. Without fear, there can be no courage. And courage is doing something that's right, even though you're scared. The biggest fear I had was abandoning my family. <laughs> but I knew it was the right thing to do. I knew I had to do it. But I didn't want to leave our baby boys and my wife without me. Come on in. All right. Thank you. Good. We're 10 days out from the surgery, um, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. They would make us walk during the uh, recovery in the hospital, and, and I couldn't keep up with him, and so I was a little <laughs> worried about my recovery. <laughs> I've still got some pain issues and soreness, but getting back on track every day that goes by, it gets better. I was so torn uh, because I was trying to save someone I love and risk him having to leave people I love. And that weighed heavy on me too, that he was risking everything to save me. And when I first opened my eyes in ICU, the first thing that came out of my mouth is, how's Dusty? I just can't thank you enough. You're welcome. The gift of life, it's amazing.